Katia and Liz. Oops, I forgot my scissors. Let me see here. There's some right there. Yeah, I'm so glad to be here too. <laughs> Be glad to have both of you here. I just wanted to get myself some smaller pieces of card stock so that I could um, um, show the thing, some things up closer. I have a new camera, but I'm not sure about the zoom levels yet. And I got one that had like five zooms, but I'm really wondering, I it doesn't have automatic fo focus, so I'm not sure I'm going to like it that well. But we'll see you today. I'm sorry you um, have problems with your left hand. I hope you enjoy the needle tatting left-handed. Oh, I'm feeling so much better. Thank you. I still have a little hoarseness, but it's not enough to, to bother me or be bad. You sounded worse, Katia, your poor voice yesterday. I hope it's feeling a little better. Well, thank you, Liz. I've missed you guys in being here. Hello? And do I call you, what is it, Ma Brands? Wonderful to have you here. Welcome. Let's see, one o'clock, I guess it's time to get started. We want to, I'm going to talk about shapes today. Oops, what? <laughs> oh, Mary, hi, Mary. <laughs> Are you having trouble signing in again with a name? Okay, we'll wait a minute for you, Mary. Katie, are you still working on your original project you started? Oh, bad weather, huh? That happens here sometimes, too. I know <laughs> I was sitting out in the sun yesterday, and uh, it was in the high 60s, and it's supposed to be today. <laughs> Hello, real Mary. <laughs> um, but we're supposed to get another winter storm. 
But that's Colorado. We go up and then next thing we're down, way cold. But I think everybody's weather's been crazy the last two years. I am going to get one more drink of my tea and then we'll get started. I want to talk about space and shape today. Um, what do, when you think of space, what do you think of? Oh, the 60s, nice. Yeah. Colorado weather, our spring kind of, um, always lingers a bit because March is when it starts getting warm on some of the days, but we have some of the worst winter storms in March. Um, I think because of um, the fact that in the spring it can be a little more moist, and um, so it's really heavy wet snow that comes more in the spring. Yes, yes, it's the negative space that can be so important and really make make a design good or not as good. I mean it it's and some of it is the way people what what people's um personal preference is. And that's the one thing to remember about your designs. Whatever you design, there's always going to be some people who don't care for it. It's just personal likes and dislikes. And so don't let that um, make you feel bad because everybody's tastes are different. Everybody likes different things. And so what appeals to one person, I think you know that, just the way everybody dresses and the way we wear our hair, we all... Um, Prefer some things over others. Sugar snow. Oh, time. Yes, I grew up in West Michigan. And it was, um, of course, we got, we got our maple syrup came in the, it was in the fall that, uh, I believe. Yes. Yeah, you can't, um, you know, not everybody's going to like whatever you design. But there are ways you can make it, I think, to appeal to most people. One of the big things is just a case of whether some people like lots of frilly and lots of picots and other people don't. And that's not something that you need to really think about. Do, it, do what you like. But you want to make sure you're appealing to... Um, um, a good size audience, you know, hopefully more of the people that like it than don't like it. And it's easy to get caught up in a design because it comes like our babies. It's like, you know, this is my design. And it's sometimes it's like, well, maybe somebody says, well, how about this or how about that? Um, and I like to always use, um, not criticized designs. No, I've lost a word. But anyway, um, a productive critiquing. Um, maybe suggest somebody, you know, I might like it if they had a little more of this. Or have you tried that in your design if somebody's struggling with a design? And that's the one thing that's always good is to have someone else's opinion sometimes just to bounce ideas off of and hopefully that's what we'll get to doing in this class um emptiness yes how negative space is is empty space but it's important empty space because it always has a shape and it doesn't necessarily have to be empty space. Um, sometimes a background is an empty space, 
but it's a negative value compared to the positive. So I want to look at some, start out with looking at this. I'm going to move this over and pull this over. Let's see if I can open up wider. And I only want to, I guess I'm going to have to open it up even wider. Um, I'm going to pull it right out of the tab. I think if I can grab it. Because I only want you to look at the left one. If I can get that one. No, shoot. Okay, I'm going to have to go back and. S I want you to just look at the top left one. I can get that so I can only show that one. That's what I'd like. But when you look at it, what do you really see or think? And I want you to look at the top one first because that's the first one she made. I guess I can't change that. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you're still seeing me. Oh, sorry about that. Let me get this out of the way. <laughs> this is what I want you to look at right here. This upper left one. But if I pull it over there. Put the chat next to it. So, no, nope, that's not going to work. Okay. This is what I want you to see right here, this top left one. <laughs> Thanks for the smiles. It's always good to see something, isn't it, when somebody's talking about it. This is Wendy Tats from Wendy Tats uh, Blogspot. And I, it's on, on Pinterest, but look at the upper left one. What are your thoughts on that one? Just sim We're just simply not critiquing it itself, but how do you feel about it? What's your personal thoughts about it? And what stands out to you? A netted field area? Yes. Yes. And why? Why do you think it looks like that? It full. Your eyes are having trouble focusing on the design. Yes, exactly. And everything almost is kind of too much the same size and the same. Look at the negative spaces even. I mean, those are even all just about the same size, right? Two colors. Yeah, the colors don't help it. Well, it has a lack of picots, yes, but some people like them that way. The thing here is now it's a progression, okay? And you'll see why soon. Now look at the um, green one. What about that one? Yeah, the colors draw your eyes and it's kind of pulls you away from the design because nothing is standing out. Hi, Arlene. So what about this green one on the right side? I hope you are seeing it. I can't see my 
Yeah, you're seeing it, okay. What about the green one now? What's different? And do you like it more or less than the first one? Yes, I agree, Liz. Much more appealing to the eye. And you, you're, you have a place to focus, whether it's in the outside, because it's got bigger spaces in this outside without that chain. That's exactly right. More balance, but the middle still looks okay. And uh, the one color helps. Yes, yes, you like, that's the thing. It's not that the left one is bad or anything. It's just that um, it gives it more varied negative space. That's the other thing about it, yes. Not only is the space bigger, it's more appealing, but the it, it um, changes the space size it it doesn't really change it well it changed the shape because it's more of a um almost like a pentagon with curved sides whereas the other little space in the pink one doesn't look like much of anything so that has really helped and it's because of the negative space and let's see I think the difference between, what a difference, but yeah, you can really like both of them. And I think if the left one was in different colors, not a variegated like the outside round is, um, like say even if the inside flower and the outside round were the same color and, um, I think that, that would make a difference. Oh, yes, yes, uh-huh. Or even uh, um, as a coaster or something. Now let's look at the third one. I guess I want to make this a little smaller so you can see both the... I'm going to see if I can get my screen opened up farther here. See the pink and the green one. It looks to me like it really emphasizes the um, I don't know what you notice more on that one. What she's done is taken out this outline around the center flower, that chain row. It's hard to compare two things um, this one has got such a deeper color, too, than the pink one is such a kind of a light color. See, more details, and it's really pleasant to the eye. More open. It is more open, yes. And it really, in a way, emphasizes the um, uh, rings around the flower. Now, I think the... Um, this one, I do like the edge around the flower. I might like it to be a little bigger and then a somehow a bigger space outside of that. This looks cramped together. Yes, they are. They are, the split rings are more visible in the third one. Yep, it kind of emphasize, those are more emphasized and you notice them more. You actually like the green better. Removing a chain only. These and the rings of the net. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. It does, yep.
Yes, that's a good observance, Liz. It does look like it's slowly opening up. I hadn't thought of that. And I can see it too, yeah. So what I want to see, the reason we're looking at these is I'm going to put this down farther. Look what she's called this. Designing process steps, three steps to a daisy wheel doily. Now, see, this is the thing. This was their very first uh, prototype. And then she made it there, and then she tried something else. And this is what designing is. You, do, you don't just sit down and usually put out a design. You're extremely lucky if that happens. But it takes um, trial and error and trying different things. Like, you know, look at this one. If that was yours and you look at it, um, it's like, what do I focus on? And just everything we've said, how can I change that now? And you have to think about the other possibilities. Till you get what you like, yes. You see the wagon wheel on the green one, yes. And that's what she was after, is a wheel. Oh, we all have <laughs> lots of typos, <laughs> Liz. We don't even, most of us do read right on through a sentence and don't even notice one, a typo anymore. Yeah, and this, um, it says, the three little doilies show the process I followed to the final daisy wheel doily design. The multi-colored doily at the top left was the first. Let me see if I can click that and make it open up. Second round, a chain in the circle of larger rings toward the outside of the design are joined by chains. The second, the green doily, has those chains taken out. So... Um, it is a much more, at the bottom she says, it's a much more open design now. Oh, I didn't, I hadn't even read this about the negative space. I just saw the three in the beginning lines, um, more negative space. And that's exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> so this is a wonderful um, piece to look at and see the stages of designing. And sometimes the process, there are basically five steps. You've got your research and your idea phase. And then you've got your prototype, which is a lot of experimenting. And then you try something different. Now you might go down to one more step, or you might go back and even do a little more researching. It's a very fluid process before you get to your final design. And then you want to have it test added. But one of the things uh, about the design elements um, and, and the element of space and negative space um, the, these are the design elements and principles are guides to use. And so if you're having a problem with your design, take a look at the list. Um, what about, you know, first of all, the negative space is always good to look at. And is there a focal point? And is there, I mean, really, Often, the focal point is the center of a doily. It doesn't have to be, though. But like this one, we had trouble focusing on something. I mean, you get to the outside, and there you can't really even get back inside. And that's where this, um, your eye, it goes, it can go in and back out. It could go, you know, it can focus in the center and go out. So that's all... Um, the things. The other thing is, 
What can you notice also in this one? What other element do you recognize in it? Whereas this one kind of looks all over. What else can you say about this one? How about if you look at this one here in the middle and this one, how about the repetition? What do you see as far as repetition? Is it much more obvious? Um, I think we're looking at it too. I get the, you get the, that wheel, the circle more the way the outside is done because it stands out because of the space and you really see the repetition and the repetition of the circles. And this one is especially nice because it's got the repetition of the rings and, but they're not all the same. These are up here, there's more of them and they're smaller, but you've got repetition all the way through of the rings. You've got repetition of the circle, circular feeling. And that's what's really making it look like a wheel because it's almost like you couldn't really go around on this one much except for the outer. But in here, your eyes really can follow this line of split rings around. So the effect she was aiming for, the wheel, just really comes through. And that comes through on the pink one too. Yes. Yeah, the center looks more developed. And even in the center, if you look close, it is five rings in the center. And the repetition, it really gives it cohesion, even though there's different things going on, like the four rings together, and here there's five, and in here they're individual going around in a circle. But it still adds a cohesion to the whole piece. Yes, the design of the outside row. Yeah, so anyway, I think I really like this green one. I really like the design, and um, it is very pleasing to look at. Um, I might have tried for a little more space myself around the center there. But then again, that is just personal taste. And this one, for anybody who likes picots, I mean, they could easily add a bunch of picots around the ends. It wouldn't necessarily look like a, a wheel like you think of as turning. It would be more of a medallion look. Now, I'm calling this a medallion. Um, can anyone tell me why? Or do you feel it's a motive? Or something other? Any ideas between a medallion and a motive? Oh, and the painted wheel, yes. <laughs> Um, it would really change the shape of this space if there were picots in there somewhere. Um, and that's one of the things picots can do. 
It could become the Dalian circular or a mode of individual piece that can be joined to exactly our lean. Medallions are motifs. <laughs> medallions, the difference is a medallion is usually the round shape. It can be exactly, it can be used as a motif because medallions are motifs. Motifs is a more general term. And motif can mean, um, has more of a meaning as a piece that's used uh, in repetition in a larger piece. And medallions um, tend to be very um, symmetrical side to side and, like I said, usually round. And they might have be broken down in fours or sixes. With spokes, DS change, double stitch chains. Um, this part almost on this one even looks like it's got spokes going into the center. Those could be emphasized. That would be a really interesting pattern if it had one more, um, if one of these was changed. There's such little things you can do to change a design. But that's where another thing we need to get into is copyright. Because you can't just take one thing and change it. I mean, this is a really, the placement of these is really um, unique in its own way. And so replacing one element in the center or adding one more row on the outside isn't going to make it original. Oh, it could be a bicycle versus a wagon wheel. Yes, it could. It could. Almost like a wheel where something's been woven in the spokes. Because the... Um, um, with these going sideways, it kind of looks like that could something could be woven. How kids decorate with crepe paper or something, but yes, it could be a could be a bicycle wheel too. Okay, I want to go on to look at a couple others. I think I'll just pull them out of here one at a time. We're going to look at some, oh, I want to point out something about the website too. Um, I want to go back to the home page. Well, you don't have to go back to home. I can just show you on the top bar. We do now have a classes tab in here. Only I realized I made an error. <laughs> I, I know I had the design class, both design classes listed, and now they're not showing in the drop down. It always shows shuttle and needle tatting. Um, but those other two will be added back in. They were there at one time. And you can go to the classes tab now and um, like go to needle tatting to Katia's page. And here's, um, I haven't added her class from yesterday yet, but that'll be down in here too. So she'll be having more on her page um, when she has things. I know she wants to have documents up on it and everything. But what I'm going to show you is we're going to look at some doilies, not some doilies. Well, actually, I, I got them out there. I think one's out of the doilies and coasters, but the other, there's also the, um, I think there's, yeah, medallions and motifs. So that's what we're going to look at is some things from in there. I'll close that down and close that down. And I think we'll open this up so I can start at the beginning. Okay, 
Here we have another one, and this, let's see, who's, this is Be Stitched. That's Nancy Tracy's design. We could even look at her, her doily up there that she uses for her um, emblem. I don't think zooming in on it. But if you take this one, you can see it doesn't have a whole lot of negative space, but it does have some. And that's what I think makes the difference between it being just too busy. The copyright dates on which, uh, uh, oh, on the, on the website. Oh, it needs to be changed to 2024, I bet. I hadn't thought of that. Uh-huh. I'll fix that so it goes through 2024. Um, Tammy's going to, I'm going to be taking care of um, getting the current things more up, the stuff about our classes. And general things I'll take care of. Um, as Shemuel says, she, she's not, not a web designer and some of those things like that, um, it, when she, it, she would have think about it if she saw it, but not just not think about it. In fact, as, oh, I got to change this yearly. And I'm going to, she's going to be working more on trying to get more and more files up. So I'm going to try, I'm going to be doing, keeping up some of the current things. Um, so that's the way that's going to go. But this, this one up on top, it's blurry. You can't see it well, but in a way it makes it easier. You can see the, um, denseness in the area, this outside, what it looks like, maybe two inches or so. And then it's got this nice open space that really pulls your eye in to see that. And then you can see two more concentric circles inside. And the center really is open, which really does draw your eye to the center. So I really like this, even though it's really dense in here. And I think a, a better picture rather than, uh, it's probably just a JPEG photo of it that um, is not clear enough for us to see. The density is all around. Yes, it does. Exactly, Liz. The density. And density, in a way, gives it visual texture. That's where texture texture comes in with tatting. It's not just a feel of texture, which you would feel a difference in the texture if you were running your hands over this, but it's visual te texture. The denser something is, the more texture it gives it. It almost, if you were thinking of fabric, would be, a, to me, a thicker fabric. And what another thing that sets it off is this nice outside edging. And this looks more light and airy, like it's got a piece of lace inside a heavier fabric. Thank you for that, Liz. That's a great observation. And that's what people don't often think of like texture in, in tatting. Except for the feel of it. Okay, here's her other, de whoops. I should pull that right out for now. Nope, it's going to pop back up. <laughs> I'm going to back out a little here. Now this is quite a simple motive, but what um, the graphic sizing does, yes. Yes. 
Another thing we're well, looking at this one too to think about is when you photograph your yes, it's a really nice one. And this too. Can you notice see how the how this center opening with the large ring and spaces is such a wonderful contrast to the edging around it. Your eye really is, is drawn to both of them. You're tempted to look for a filter to blur your designs to analyze. Okay, you know, that's one of the things I had thought in my mind, but because um, when I looked at that blue one, have you ever, if ever closed your eyes just a little way and just looked at something so you're not actually seeing it, you're, you're just seeing the blurred effect of it? That's really a nice way to look. That's how quilters look at their patterns and colors together. You close your eyes so that you can just see a little and then it looks totally different because you catch the things that stand out. It does have a very nice balance to it. And I think putting in, like, she's got five rings and, of course, the four then outside. You always have one less chain than you have rings. And that's why I wanted you to see this one, just because of the nice. And having a space this size with just one picot sticking out of the top it is just such a nice touch. I think the center would look in this size of the size of the rings in the center. If it didn't have extra picots, I think it would look too bare. I think that the few picots it has really helps it really gives interest to the center shape. The center would be kind of blah without it. And um, so, yes, this is a, this is a, I picked this because I thought it was a really nice design and really shows how you can use the contrast of the denseness and the openness of the center, just like she did with her more complicated, this one. Let's see the next one we want to look at. Okay, this is an oval one. When you talk about shapes, Altered Method Work in Norma Benpris Oval Motif by Jennifer Bundy. Look at how the effect of the uh, spaces in this one really emphasizing these rings is a really interesting touch. Um, in a way, to me, they kind of look plain, and I might have put, I don't know if I would have put more picots in there or what, but it is a nice effect to make the oval. And notice how easily you can take a round center. Okay, oh, that's what we haven't talked about. Oh, I wish I hadn't closed. Let me see if I can pull it back up again because I want to look at something else. I want to talk about something else because we're talking about medallions. And I want to talk about how you begin medallions. Anyone know what kind of uh, the outer row kind of pull everything together? Yes, as if it was in a frame. Yes, Katia. Yes, everybody, you make wonderful observations. And this is the thing you have to do is look at your own pieces with an objective eye. 
And one of the things an artist will do, and it's recommended for artists, and is that you set your side, your piece on a counter or prop it up, whatever. And when you walk by it during the day, take a look at it. Sometimes standing back at looking at something, the, rather than we're always, when we're up close and looking at something, it can give you a different perspective on things. That's right, Arlene, it does. Yep, yep, there is a nice contrast there. And we'll go back to that one in just a second. But anybody know what kind of a center this is? This is considered an enclosed space. You've made a lot of rings and you've made them so that they enclose an open space. And knowing the kinds of them isn't really that important, but sometimes if you're thinking about how to start, and you remember, that's what I was going to have you do on the paper, but we might skip that for today, is draw some centers. You could also have an enclosed space if you had the rings facing outward. So get rid of this, and we'll go back to this one. Yeah, it does. Those rings do um, blend, uh, you know, um, the effect of no picots on those and the center daisy. Now this is one where it looks to me like it's a central ring that is beginning this one. And then they've had the picots out. So yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Um, The lack of picots, yeah, okay. I got the picots on the center daisy. Contrast with the picots on the outer edge, yes. Yes, this one has nice contrast, even though it doesn't have that much to it. And I think that the three more circular ones here, I think they really frame the daisy nicely. So that's another one. And look at the shape, you know, think about the way you can start with a circle and then go into another shape. Anything else about this one? Now, one of my favorites, like leaves. Oh, yes, it does like leaves. I hadn't thought of that. This would be really fun done in um, bright colors for the center and green for there and, I don't know, sky blue for the outside. <laughs> it does. It does look. And, you know, sometimes people put berries together with flowers and all, so it could be that. Yeah, the picots are joins, yes. They're not decorative. So, yeah, so you really do have that nice contrast of no picots in the center and the picots. That was good, Arlene. All of you are making wonderful. You're all um, <clears throat> really good at looking at um, how these are put together. You like that created by the varying density of the grouping of the Joining rings in the outer round. Oh, yes, yes. You know, that is a... <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. I think that if they these groupings are really... Oh, yeah, frame. I read it as frame. I didn't even <laughs> notice the G. Um, I didn't even thought of that. Because there's four here, which really emphasize the outside shape, the width of this. And then two on the one and one on each, two separate ones. That's a wonderful. And it adds variety. 
this, if there wasn't that, it, oh, excuse me, I've got kind of half burp and half hiccups today. <laughs> um, it could be a very boring piece. Um, if it wasn't for the um, nice groupings on the edge, sometimes it takes a while to figure out what you like about a piece. And then it's like, this gives it a rhythm too. We talk about um, repetition can have a rhythm. Oh, metallic filigree for you. That would be nice too. It is varying densities, yeah. It's much more dense right in here and lighter. It gets lighter as you go up to these three bigger spaces here, which give this an airier look. It's amazing what you see in designs. And this is why, like looking at this one is a really nice example of if you're um, Peace just feels too busy. Think about grouping things. Think about how you can maybe pull some parts together tighter, like with the four here and the left and right sides. And then the two in one getting airier and airier. And think about your piece, where could you maybe make a little more space by um, maybe pulling two rings together into one space. And if you really look at the outside edges, does she, I don't think this one has, oh, it does have a diagram. Look how interesting the diagram is. I think that's pretty all by itself. Even not being tatted, it's a pretty looking design and very well balanced because it is symmetrical if you split down the center side to side and some and mirror image both top to bottom and left to right. Looks simple, but yes, it has a lot of interest, yep, when you look at it. And everybody's pulled out a different part of it that makes it interesting. And granted, you don't think about all these things when you're actually starting putting a design together. But if you're having problems with a design, it could be by thinking about that, the spaces and openness or the density of it, the arrangement of the rings, whether they're straight up and, you know, up and down, more up and down facing the element before them, or if like they're facing inwards toward the one element. So just the change of a little bit of joining the rings together and having them close together, all those different things can help a design if your design is looking boring or too busy or something is lacking. And I was talking about rhythm and the rhythm Anybody have any idea what I'm talking about, a rhythm in this piece? And I'm more looking at the outer edge of it. Or maybe the inside compared to the outside. And this goes along with density, too. Think of it when something is like this big one in the center. What kind of a tone would you think of that one compared to these three here? And all these little ones out here. I feel like this would kind of be the center like a Da, 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 with a little, and then da, 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 framing it, and then this really light, da, 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 like here's, um, 
Pam 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 ma pam pam ma pam 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 ma pam pam pam. A Melanie survey has actually designed at least one piece where she designed it to fit a piece of music. Visual sound, yep, visual sound. And the other thing we're getting is a pattern here, a pattern that could be repeated. So you've got individual rings repeated, and then um, two rings repeated, and then two rings spaced apart. There, are, it, it all just adds together. The center being humming and the trios being singular notes. Yes, like hammer bell and the outside being a melody. Yes. Oh, I'll have to. I'll have to. I can't even think of the name of it, but I I know I can I can get it. And we can look at that because it's really interesting. And the last one is what. Now this isn't a medallion; it's more of a motif. But you will see it like um, um, some um, sometimes in architectural tiles and things they'll call them a medallion tile. But it, and it does have your med circular medallion in the middle of it, and except for the outside edging that gives it a different shape and it does start out with a square and a diamond I guess because it's on point so think about your shapes think about varying things just this center and the um, chains have a nice contrast and the rings of the circular and curvy to the rec the diamond in the center. Now, if this piece had just that, it might not look right. Um, but it's got the nice square shape on the outside. Now, it's got soft corners, rounded. But our brains even though it's got roundness in there and there and on the corner again, our brains think about... Oh, hi, Tuya! Tuya, maybe? <laughs> I always forget how to say that. I'm glad you've enjoyed it and found it interesting. It is getting towards that time, isn't it? I only want to show you one other thing for talk about next week. And maybe I'll quick put that in and we'll go back and look at this one for a minute. I'm going to put you to my down screen to show you what I've been doing. My down shot. And what I want to talk about next week. Now this one is just a medallion. It might show better against here. The center is really too, um, I think, too cluttered and bad. And the whole thing doesn't, oh, the other one doesn't lay flat. Now this one... It has, this is what happens when you're attempting things. Can you see how that's a ruffle there? It's got like an extra one in it. Whoops, I don't want to show the, it's not that part. Contrasting colors can really make a difference. Of course, this is like 4th of July for in America. So that's the last on medallions.
This is what I've done, a sample. We're going to start next week talking about the difference in joins. Oh, you usually use it in that chat. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm so glad you started talking because it's interesting. I really appreciate that. So we're going to start talking about joins. And I've made a little sampler here. It could have been made and started as a ring or something. But I have done one of each different... Um, there's a little fuzziness in this camera, and I don't know why. But I think you, let me zoom, let me try one more thing. I'll keep it down here, but see if I go in like that. Maybe it's better. This is just a regular shuttle join. Whoops. Show it better on our... I don't know if that shows up better or not. And what you can see is that, well, first of all, it's got the big dip. This is really a big dip. And there's a little cross or a cross there, which actually is, you probably, I don't know if you can see it, but it's one of the legs. And the other one is right over here. You know how when you do your pull up um, um, shuttle join, your lock join, it has two legs on it. And actually a, a piece of the Pico shows through. It might be because I, and you can't really see that because my Pico was too big. Okay, this next one, if you look, It almost has the same dip in it, whoops, but it doesn't have the same base. These two picot tops look like they're right next to each other, whereas with the up shuttle join, there's a little more space. You get a little more spacing right in there. I did this one, the second one, it's a shuttle lock join, but instead of pulling the thread up, I pulled it down and went through. And that gives me a little bit different of a look. And when you pull up and go through it, and I'm going to like make these next week so we can look at how they're formed and what they do. So I'll, the next one actually is a, or a young join, and that's got a big bar across the bottom. And then we've got, what is that one? I can't remember what that one is. So anyway, I've gone around, and now notice how it's flattening out, because I've got a regular Catherine's wheel here. This one has a dip in the middle. I think this is the slope and roll join or this one might be the slope and roll join they all look a little different so we're going to get into that and i think like this dip in here could be an interesting to start the um um whoops maybe we can take everything out from under there to start the um shape of an open space You get more ideas, yes. And I want you to think about starting a medallion. And of course, this would, samples of, try doing the different rings, what you know, or try learning a new one, uh, not rings, um, joins. Because we're going to look at um, how they're made next week and why we, you know, would choose one over the other. But next week, I want... Um, to start building a medallion from the center out. And each row, for one thing, 
each row is going to have the same um, type of join all the way around it. And then I want the next round to have a different type. So we'll do a whole round of the different type of joins. And we'll talk about maybe what directions you can go off of them too. So are there any questions? I never even asked that during class. Well, I did, didn't I? I asked a lot of questions during class. So are there any questions or comments or even anything you want to ask about or in design or talk about? You don't have to make a medallion if you're working on a current project, but you might want to take a break from it. And because if you, can I do a slope and royal join? That's a question for Katia. <laughs> So next week we're going to study on joins. Yes, the different kinds of joins and the look they make. And actually, one of the good one of the things to do is look at Liz's sheet that she gave us. She's got a list of different joins on there. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to say. Goodbye for now, and we will see you next week or tonight for diagram class. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. This has been wonderful. Thanks for coming and for contributing. This, things like this are even a learning experience for me because I, I, um, what you see makes me think more about things, too. Yes, there are. Right, the look isn't quite the same. Close, but not the same. Oh, you're welcome, Liz. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Tuya, I hope you come back and, and chat more with us. Yeah, the slope and roll might work nice for the spiral. That's actually, this is actually the first time I've made that join at all so i don't know what it how it'll work out in different things and that's what we want to make samples for and put notes down as to what we like about it and what we don't you know and how it would work and maybe you know any little tips and hints to yourself um especially if you put them you know like um i'm using i am still using four by six index cards so i would could write even on the back little notes and tips and hints. Well, bye-bye for now, and we'll see you next week.